Okay, so thank you, Asma, and uh, welcome to you to this last uh, session for today regarding architecting for a container native environment, as um, Asma said. Um, let me explain you a bit of why we decided to have this, uh, this topic in this, in this session today. So the main purpose is, uh, was to at least, if not educate architect, uh, at least to trigger a discussion between architect on how approach a new architecture strategy, uh, which take full advantage of all this new technology, which is the container, uh, the container world. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been assigned this uh, this task, and uh, I meant it's like a research. I made a research, something like similar to what you what you do in a university. Uh, I call it a journey. Um, and yet I want to share with you what uh, what are the outcome of this uh, of my personal uh, research. So, as a typical uh, research, I start really from the scratch. I start uh, uh, investigating uh, on the key keywords of the of the. Um, uh, of the title, so if uh, contain, uh, investigating on container native sounds something obvious, I also want to feel, I felt the need to review what architect to, uh, IT architecture mean. Uh, so I collect some uh, 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 definition you can find plenty of in, uh, in internet, etc. What I reported here is, in my opinion, quite interesting because uh, I stress the fact that an architecture is meant for design IT component for the business of the business and is meant for support organization objectives. Uh, regarding container native is of, of course a bit more difficult to find a definition. Uh, however, uh, what I found is uh, the fact that uh, a university means or meant like something that is not happen to work uh, in or around container, but are explicitly designed per uh, container. So in a way that take full advantage of the potentialities of the containers. So there's another reason why I wanted to investigate on this definition, because when I start working on this, um, on this topic, I immediately spot uh, a risk. And uh, the risk is to divert by, from the, the main purpose of the, of, of the discussion and to start talking generically on container, start talking about the benefit of the container, the tools that have been, that arose around container. Or another risk is to divert on container native development, which you can find plenty of material of. So discussing about best, best practice, uh, guideline, etc. This is not the purpose. We want to stay focused on architecture and see how this uh, new technology can lead to new uh, architecture strategy. But first I want to open <laughs> a bracket. So the funny story, I want to tell you a funny story. Uh, I think you, all of you know who is this guy on the left in dark is called uh, Devil's Advocate. But maybe not, not, not uh, all of you knows that, which is the main uh, uh, purpose of, of in, the, in, the, in, this, in the Catholic Church, which is not to fight against the theory, but instead uh, to, with the doubts, uh, to reinforce it. And why I want I tell you about that? Because when I start working with uh, containers time ago, uh, I had continuous a sort of deja vu because I was working uh, not my, maybe not directly, but uh, in my uh, beginning of my professional uh, experience with IBM, my frames, and often uh, when I was uh, investigating or using containers, this recalled me uh, the IBM, my frame uh, partition. So I want to close the bracket here, not to. It's not uh, uh, my purpose to investigate on this uh, topic, but uh, I want just to share with you this, uh, this funny story. Uh, coming to the, the heart of the, of the topic, uh, we can all agree that, uh, I think we can all agree that uh, uh, container, uh, containerization is, uh, can be, uh, for sure, considered a dis disruptive technology. They grow. And which, uh, with which is, uh, is taking place in modern IT uh, organization is really impressive. And uh, I think that to, to start with this, um, uh, um, how to architect a new uh, container-based uh, uh, environment, uh, an architect should look at the reason of this, uh, of this incre incredible uh, uh, success. Um, and the reason, in my opinion, I reported uh, the, the, the main, which I consider the main reason here. So, uh, containerization is flexible, 
lightweight, interchangeable, portable, scalable, and stackable. So I think that um, there's a good starting point to understand not, not only the reason of this success, but all how you, you can um, uh, leverage or take advantage of uh, this uh, technology, which is what I did. I uh, started with a sort of brainstorming, tried to collect in all what uh, came to my mind related to container, and uh, investigating what uh, each of them can mean in terms of new uh, opportunity, in terms of uh, architecting or IT architecture. So the words are probably are common to you. Um, when you think about uh, container, you immediately think about immutable, rapid start, small size, uh, single function, etc. cetera. Uh, so I select some of them. Uh, those that, uh, in my opinion, uh, are more significant from the point of view of architectural decision. And I develop further each of, each of those that you see here. And immediately I spotted that either one single or uh, a group of them uh, could open really uh, uh, pour, uh, the door to mm, new architectural approach. Uh, so let's start with the first. The first is, I think, the most obvious when someone speaks about uh, container, uh, immutable uh, immediately came to, to his mind. Uh, I've attended to uh, a session with uh, one of our customers uh, using uh, uh, API management, uh, and they have a full uh, immutable approach in place for uh, developing, the, deploying the API, API tool. So I think no, all of you know uh, what uh, immutable in containers means. So it means that no application update, security patch, or configuration change happen on production system when containers concerned. Instead, for any of this change, the best approach is to create a new image and uh, re-trigger the deployment cycle from the scratch, from um, development, test, automatic test, and deploy into production uh, with the, in the chain of the continuous integration and continuous deployment. This, of course, has some consequences. So it means that containers uh, do not have memory. So for example, any configuration must be treated or managed separately outside with environment variable, for example, is the most uh, simple solution, the most simple approach or uh, counting or more sophisticated tool like uh, central registry. I reported here at Zookeeper, but there are plenty of ETCD, for example. Or if you, well, the most uh, common nowadays, use a container in, in, um, in a managed way or with an orchestrator like Kubernetes, they can rely on a specific tool like secret for confidential data or uh, config map for non-confidential data. The advantage of, our, of this, uh, this approach are that uh, you can count of uh, an higher confidence in the code running in production. Uh, you can uh, streamline your testing and deployment uh, workflow. And this approach is obviously easy to roll back because you, have, uh, you can count to uh, yeah, immutable images that you can uh, uh, immediately delete if are not uh, uh, performing correctly and roll back to uh, a previous one. Uh, let's look at the impact on the architecture, which is what uh, interests uh, mostly us. So the, uh, the impact uh, on architecture that I spotted for this, uh, for this feature is uh, related to the deployment strategy, of course. So it opened the doors for a wide range opportunity uh, in the deployment, for example, Canary release or blue-green deployment. Even if they're not directly connected to con con uh, the container, they can be used even in, in, uh, without or normal virtual machine. But with container, they, they um, uh, I, I can say they are, uh, it can be fully beneficial. Uh, the second is uh, on the uh, architecture of the scalability and the stability of your IT landscape. Uh, obviously, uh, it brings more flexibility in terms of scalability and stability. And there is an impact on the security architecture. If you think that uh, fresh containers, uh, you, you can have fresh container after each restart, after each update, 
which is of course clean or have every, any injection or any vulnerability. So this means that uh, uh, your uh, approach uh, for design and security architecture can uh, be beneficial by these, uh, these, uh, these uh, features. And then we will dis discuss a lot later about external storage, the impact on, uh, as I said before, as uh, containers are immutable, they don't have memory, any memory has, must be externalized with an external storage. The second uh, keyword I want to discuss uh, with you is a single function. So single function means uh, one task, one container. Uh, in fact, the single process per container is a recommendation of Docker itself, is a, a recommended design pattern from Docker itself. Docker itself runs one, one process per container. If you want to run more process per container, you have to make some arrangement. So one container, one task, and the advantage of this solution that is that you don't have a complex uh, internal state, state so it's uh, easy to scale horizontally. You can add uh, uh, easily more uh, container. You can count on a more resilient architecture because each, uh, each, each container is uh, dedicated to one task. If you want to restart that task, you don't want to restart the whole uh, uh, other in, um, correlated uh, services or uncorrelated services. Um, the, it's the same if the container fail is associated to one, one task, one container, so the failure is limited to this functionality. Uh, single function led to a great benefit in terms of uh, minimize the start time, which uh, is an up, that, another topic that we'll touch later. Uh, and you will have, for, of, of course, a better control of failure because the reason I said before. So uh, uh, there is a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, correspondence between a service and container. When the service fails, also the container is in a failure state. There's no ambiguity, and that you can manage it as you, as you wish. You can restart, etc. And last, uh, I would say that the single f uh, function um, in the container, uh, um, in the container environment, is uh, uh, the basis or enable uh, a microservice architecture. Uh, um, what is the architecture impact of uh, this uh, this approach? Well, basically, uh, uh, means that if you want to make to build an application, which has a typical uh, business function, uh, database message queuing, typically, you have to externalize what is not business in separate containers. So database must to run in a separate container. You have to push uh, out what is not the business part. And uh, the same, for example, message queue. Um, regarding the system demos or services that run along with your um, business task, here the, the rules are basically three remove, externalize, or delegate. So the first is remove. Uh, sometimes uh, you don't need some uh, demons that run in a Linux environment. For event, event, uh, example, in a, when, when containers concern, the example is SSH. As you have uh, uh, most likely immutable container, you don't need to necessarily have a, a way to access the container via SSH. So you can remove these services, these demos, it is not needed. Or second, externalize. Externalize what everything is possible to externalize. For example, cron tab, uh, key value, storage management. These demos, the services can be run in a separate one-off or not one-off container. Uh, or the same apply, for example, for a scheduled task, asynchronous task. You have to keep it separated from your service uh, container. Um, or the last, delegate. Delegate to the Docker uh, uh, or, or, or an orchestrator like Kubernetes can easily manage uh, upstart uh, or shutdown task, uh, management uh, in general of the, of the orchestrator. Moving on, uh, small size. Uh, why is important small size in, in this case? Well, uh, small images are faster to pull and uh, to load to memory, 
to your team memory. And this uh, is a prerequisite. This uh, allows you to have a streamlined uh, CI SCD process. It has, again, the things are quite correlated. As you are an immutable container, you are opening, often uh, moving uh, or triggering the deployment process from, from the dev to production or uh, limited to test, etc. But you can probably have even daily uh, this, this process. And if you have small images, this is really faster. Uh, the benefit of a container, again, I imagine you have seen several times this picture of the advantages of having a uh, container against a virtual machine. But you have, if you have uh, big ima images, this advantage is, is uh, not valid anymore, I would say. So, Keep it uh, small, bring the, uh, could leverage the real advantage of a container against virtual machine. Uh, again, uh, uh, there is an impact on uh, security because small images uh, are safer. They don't uh, contain uh, non-needed packages, and non-needed package won't for sure, no, packages that are not present won't for sure create uh, security breaches. Uh, let's spend a couple of words on how to achieve uh, uh, small uh, images, because apparently it cannot be so easy. If you can imagine that official node image is more than 600 megabytes, it's a huge image. And you have just, just the, the base, and on top you have to build your application. Uh, the rule here uh, is to create your image from scratch. Using this approach, you can create easily for the same, uh, um, has been proved that the same uh, node um, uh, framework with your application on top can be created with 20 megabytes instead, instead of 800 or 700. So create from the, sledge, from the scratch using the base, uh, for example, uh, framework languages. There are uh, base images for every languages and there are base images for uh, small the so-called small uh, Linux uh, operating system. For example, Alpine or Tiny Core or Nix OS, they are very small, some megabytes, uh, you have an uh, actual uh, running operating system. What is the ar architectural impact of this, uh, of this choice? Well, uh, it's not directly linked to small size, but it's linked to a combination of uh, uh, what we have seen so far. So small size, immutable, a single function. And the most interesting impact from architectural point of view I found here is uh, uh, a look at the Java world when uh, using extremely this feature can lead to uh, reduce uh, need to have Java application server. I wrote here Java application server are no longer need is a bit of extreme sentence, but for sure you can replace uh, in some, some, some cases, uh, an architecture ba uh, or based on a Java application server with uh, just a simple uh, con just container. So you can decide to, instead of uh, dropping your, your uh, asset in uh, WAR and deploy on a Java application server, uh, drop this, your, uh, your development in a, in a jar. And per single function, single function, one jar, and deploy them in a container, in an orchestrator, et cetera. So you can delegate in this way most of the functionality that are typically assigned to a Java application server to the, to the orchestrator itself, for the upgrade, start, stop, et cetera. Uh, you don't have any more problem with the Java loader, and it's more flexible. So uh, again, the discussion of uh, instead of having one huge application, you have several uh, containers that you can manage, restart, uh, shut down as you wish, without impact on uh, the rest of the functionalities. For doing that, you can use a framework, uh, for example, Spring Boot for Java. Ballerina is not Java, but it's an example of what you can achieve the same, uh, the same outcome of using a Java application server without the Java application server. This is a huge uh, potential impact on architecture decision. Then we have a uh, quick start uh, and uh, no long running, no garbage collector. I bundle them together. Uh, starting from fact, so container typically start uh, very quickly in less than one second. 
and also the fact that, uh, according to statistics, container average lifetime is quite low. So one of you can act as a um, devil advocate and say, yes, but this is because it's not production, it's because they are using development. Maybe, I don't know, but still. Uh, still is, is that one, this is a fact. So what does it mean? This means that we have also here a potential architect of choice, which is uh, what is called the disposal approach. So instead of, a, uh, instead of having a long running server, potential approach could be have uh, containers which start, run, and die. Start, make their task, and die, instead of running continuously and wa uh, waiting for uh, inputs. Uh, also, if you want to maintain uh, the concept of long-running server, still this feature is useful when, uh, because the orchestrator can rapidly start a container in case of failure, or start a, restart a container if this failure is not occurring in, in order to, to prevent failure. For example, checking the memory uh, when the memory reaches a certain water level, restart of a container, assuming that you have uh, enough uh, redundancies. So no more garbage collector issues, for example. And it can be a perfect approach for task, batch processes, initial load, one-off processes, near real-time data synchronization, workflow, et cetera. In this case, this approach of the start, run, die fit perfectly. There is also, I found, uh, extreme in interpretation of this approach, which uh, means uh, to have uh, one container per user, but something that uh, probably is too, too early to discuss about. The last topic I want to touch is a real uh, hot one, and is an uh, eternal battle between uh, stateless and stateful. Uh, there is a, a prejudice here that uh, containers are for stateless, which is, can be considered partially true. However, I, don't, I can't imagine an application without state, so every application is state. So here what I found uh, is that uh, the, the correct approach should be idly a built stateful application, because you can avoid, but use stateless services. And there are some guidelines how to, to do it, how to manage state. And before, uh, in order to, to understand, it's important to catalog, uh, uh, understand which are the state that an application usually handles. So we will have a persistent stage, so the, memo, the data of the application itself. And for this, the rule would be externalize external database or host volume or a more sophisticated uh, environment, share volume, file system in order to avoid synchronization, etc. or volume plugin, which is a feature that uh, some uh, container orchestrator can provide. Then you have configuration state, we have already discussed, so there I can handle uh, easily with, uh, as I said, envir environment variable or credential management tool for secret data or um, registry, etc. This is for configuration state. Then we have session state typically. And session state, also here, the rule is uh, to have not local cache, not local session, but uh, have the session state distributed in database on distri or distributed cache. So when it's possible, this avoids a lot of problems. What is not possible, in the rare case that you have to hand handle sticky session because you want to uh, address any single uh, request to a specific server for some reason, this is, uh, of course, not quite uh, easy to solve, but not impossible. Uh, you can uh, leverage on the functionality of a normal load balancer, or better, the so-called container-native load balancer that have the capability to uh, address requests to a specific, uh, a specific pod, for example, or a specific, specific container. Then we have the connection state. Here, also, uh, the rule is try to avoid any protocol which is not uh, stateless. So use HTTP, for example. When is there is a requirement, for example, to use a WebSocket, uh, again, uh, this is not impossible to achieve. A containerization is still, uh, is still possible uh, using, again, uh, what I mentioned before, container native load balancer or load balancer in general. And the last one is a cluster state. So here it would be the best also to have clusters that are fully independent and each other. They, they, they 
don't know each other. But when, however, sometimes it's not uh, some cluster rely on the fact that um, uh, they have a state, a cluster state. And uh, in that case, uh, of course, it's not so easy. But there are some development, for example, from Kubernetes with the stateful sets that can achieve this, uh, this result. OK, so far we have discussed around uh, building a new application and how to make it uh, uh, containerized. Uh, what, what about existing state of heavy or application that I want to move to a container? Is it still possible? Uh, answer is yes, but in the sense that, of course, the challenges are definitely more. Uh, you can uh, face a resource management uh, problem, a storage management problem. Services lifecycle are definitely more complex because they have to coordinate several steps. But still, is uh, is possible, and also technology can help. With, uh, for example, I found a uh, feature uh, in Mesosphere DCOS that can help in this target. Well, I'm at the end of the journey, so uh, I would more than happy that I have passed down some uh, some information that myself I've learned during this uh, uh, research, and especially I've. I really was impressed how, how many opportunity uh, uh, you can have uh, when you want to uh, develop a new architecture based on uh, a container environment. So open, as you have seen, I just report some examples. There are more, yeah, even definitely more. And uh, also what I discovered, a bit related to the subject of this uh, uh, conference, that such, uh, the, such approach can increase the agility of your environment in terms of more uh, scalability and more automation. So this is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you, and can get questions if any. OK, thank you.